We buried another question. We buried our brother today due to him being a victim of a drive-by shooting. Sadly, this is a terrible trend in the community, specifically the Somali community. I have heard, and Allah knows best, of the accuracy, but Somalis make up 3 to 4% of the population of Toronto, but the male youth are around 35% of all homicides in the city of Toronto in 2016 so far. The question is, what advice would you give to the youth who have lost their way, and, uh, lost their way to come back to Allah and avoid this trend in the future? Listen to these durus. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to repeat everything that we've said myself and our brother Abu Iyad, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, has mentioned over the last few days, but you really need to, as parents and as educators, as community leaders, as people who have an active uh, part, and, uh, a part and investment within your community, a moral investment, a religious investment, or an investment because this is the community that, you're, you know, that you live in, then you need to pay attention to what has been said, and get that message out to the youth through whatever means necessary outreach work outreach work that doesn't just throw a basketball at them and go and play because that will stop you from shooting each other because that is not the solution you know that was the solution of the you know the de-radicalization program in the uk what was the solution put table tennis what do you call them here you call it table tennis okay or ping pong or table tennis tables in in uh, community centers and that will stop them from blowing themselves up no it won't that is not the solution. Or give them a basketball to play with. That's going to that's not going to stop them. There needs to be some substance and some cultivation and some societal changes. Right? We can't, of course, individually change society, but we can change members of society. That's the role. That's what the Prophet ﷺ did. Right? Alayhi salatu wasalam. He gave da'wah to the people individually, inviting them to Islam, calling them to good moral character calling them to stop burying their daughters alive and to give their wealth and to give sadaqah and to pray to Allah and worship Allah alone and to destroy the idols. That's what the Prophet ﷺ came with. We can change whole societies like that. Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah and Muhammad bin Saud rahimahullah, the first Saudi state that was established in the, in the 13th century. Now that Saudi state was established barakallahu feekum upon the spread of this da'wah. The spread of the da'wah. Calling the people to the truth. Establishing the truth. So we spread the da'wah. Sheikh Muqbil, you know when Sheikh Muqbil rahimahullah died, BBC did a profile on him. BBC in the United Kingdom. They said this one man converted one million people to pietist Salafism. BBC said that. This one man. They Even they know. One million. The scholars said that's not. He's lying. He's not one. He's more than a million that he brought to Salafiyyah. This is Sheikh Muqbil. One man can change a whole society. Not with the raising of a gun or a pistol. With what? With da'wah. We can change societies. We can't change the, the higher echelons of society. You know, we can't tell, you know, they don't want to listen to our ideas in terms of morality and tawheed and aqeedah. Maybe individuals do. I heard one of your ministers fasted this year. Am I right? Someone fasted amongst them. So they know about Islam. Right? So we know that there are people within this society that we can reach out to. Why can't we reach out to the Somali youth? Britain has a similar problem with Muslims generally, not just Somalis, Pakistanis, Somalis, Arabs, you know, Bangladeshi youth. That, you know, they may make up, Muslims make up, I think, 2 million of the population. The population of Britain is over 80,000, maybe 85 to 90,000. And 2 million are Muslims. So, you know, as you can see from the population, as far as the prison population is concerned, it's three times more or four times more the population of the country. So they're more prone to crime. And of course, this is also rooted in the fact that there is a huge amount of racism within the United Kingdom and Europe generally. There's a lot of Islamophobia. There has been historically problems with racism and, and putting Muslims and colored people, generally people of color, whether it be Caribbean or African or whatever, put them in ghettos right from the 1950s onwards. You know, these stories that you hear of England where people used to come to London and they used to look for somewhere to sit or uh, somewhere to stay the night, a bed sit, because they've just come off a ship coming from India or from Jamaica and they used to go to a bed and breakfast and the bed and breakfast used, used to say no black people and no dogs. Right? And that was common in those days. And, and of course they weren't given the good jobs, they were given poor education, they were deprived in the inner city areas. So, the, so of course the, the, the complexities of why Muslims end up where they end up or black people end up where they end up or coloured people, Asian people end up where they end up it's complex. It's not just about people wanting to be violent. You know, we can't just say that Somalis 
what they want, these youth want, is they just want to go out and kill other people. That's not where it begins. There's something missing in society. There's something within the structure of society that is letting them down. Someone is failing them. They, of course, they're failing themselves by you know, pulling out a gun upon another Muslim. All right? And of course, in that department, we have a role to play. But in England, of course, m- huge amounts of research have been done within PhDs, within university departments, and you know, departments of sociology and anthropology and so on. Where they, or, 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 or where, where departments where they, where they talk about crime in society and, and, and other such affairs. And they talk about things like you know, poor education, that they weren't focused upon. Black people aren't focused upon. Colored people, Muslims aren't focused upon. That they're marginalized in societies. They're put in ghettos. And 20, 30 years later, you see a fractured society. And you see it in America today. Right? You see it in America today with the, with the shootings that you hear of. You know, th- this, this isn't something that has just copped up in 2016. This is historical. But as Muslims, we have a duty because even in the time of the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, were they not killing and shooting? Well, they weren't shooting, but they were killing each other. Battles used to take place between the tribes. Right? Tribes used to hate each other. And they used to kill each other. And they would slaughter each other. Look at Awz and Khazraj in, and Khazraj in, in Medina. How they are at war with each other for decades, if not centuries. Yet, when Islam came and Iman entered their hearts, those who were enemies one day became brothers the next day. It's possible. Which means we have a duty. But it is to understand also the background that they're coming from. And therefore, what we have been talking about over the last few days is of vital importance that we get this message into our homes and into our families. By distributing these audios, for example, getting them out there, handing them out free, trans- if you want to use your phone in a fruitful manner, then WhatsApp the audios to them. Why not? Barakallahu feekum. Tell them you have to listen to this. You have to listen to this khutbah. You have to listen to this dars this evening. You have to listen to the dars that the brother Abu Yad gave or Fulan gave. Get the message out there. You won't be able to save all of them. But even if you imagine you save one, save two, save three. It builds. Dawah builds like this. Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, by the permission of Allah and Muhammad bin Saud, changed the whole nation. The whole of the Jazeera came upon Tawheed in one generation. So it's possible. Even in one generation in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, 23 years, the whole of the Jazeera. Within 100 years, the whole of North Africa, all the way across to Sindh. And the southern steppes of Russia and Africa. Or patches of Africa, right across. Uh, the whole of North Africa became Arabized within 100 years. The Muslims were in Spain within 100 years. Why? And what's that? Three generations? Four generations? It can be done. The thing is that it requires... You know, this, this, this azima, this, this real resolve, and this, and, and this feeling within yourself that I'm not going to give up. I'm not giving up. Whether they listen to me or don't listen to me, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my neighbors, I'm trying my friends, try my family members, try my mother, my father, my children. You don't give up, barakallahu feekum. Naam. No.